Hi, it's Sonia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, this is a weird angle because I've lost my tripod. Uh, I just did a workshop at the weekend, which was really good, but my studio is in a bit of a bomb site. So, but I want to crack on and talk this week about, um, inspired a bit by going through paper and sketchbooks. Uh, this week, I want to talk about the sketchbooks and paper that I like to use in my work, because I know sometimes I get questions on it and I thought it's a good opportunity because I've been thinking about that myself just to go through some of my favourite materials and how I use them. Um, and also there will be another video coming out later this week that I did last week, but I had a load of uh, editing sort of issues, so I ended up redoing it. And yeah, but it's on um, how to come up with your own drawing challenges and projects, which is something that's sort of on my mind now. So in some ways it's a bit, I might repeat some of my earlier tips from, I think I did sort of daily habits and 15 drawing ideas, but it's more focused on how to, uh, if you're having, you know, wanting to come up with your own drawing challenges and projects that will be coming out if I can upload it and sort it out. So yeah, let's crack on with uh, some of my favorite materials. Okay, so let's go into sketchbooks. Sketchbooks are my number one item. They are how I've kind of got back into drawing. I love sketchbooks. I love looking in other people's sketchbooks. That's always where I go when I'm in a gallery or see if there, um, any artist sketchbooks are displayed. And yes, I think they're just a way, they feel a bit, I always feel like it's a bit more of a private space, even though a lot of us share all of them. But at the same time, it just feels more intimate. They're more contained. I think they're quite a bit more easy to store in some ways. So yeah, sketchbooks are my number one thing. I love to draw and paint in. And um, I think that you can have, if you've watched a lot of my videos and sketchbook tours, uh, you can have different types of sketchbooks. In the old days, I used to just have like one sketchbook that I tried to keep two or two. Um, and I was quite sort of religious in filling them. So, and they're also quite cheap. When I first started to get back to it, I think you kind of want to start off, well, personally, this is a personal opinion, uh, obviously do what feels what's going to help you draw the most. But personally, I had moleskin uh, journals, that I, that, but I, I very rarely to begin with used them because they just felt too precious. And, um, I have to say, a lot of my sketchbooks are up in my bedroom on a shelf. I should really move them here. But um, but this, so this would be an early sketchbook that, to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to do a tour of because it's um, it's really, what's the word? Well, it's an anything goes sketchbook, but it's, it's also got notes. I didn't keep it that religiously. I've stuck things in. So this one was a gift from a friend and as you can see it's like a note it's basically I think meant to be a notebook it's got these little nice little um sort of maybe coloring pages but I ended up using it as a sort of an anything goes journal and just drawing in it making patterns in it writing in it oh gosh yeah some of this I don't want to show when did it from it's from 2018 but yeah, but this paper actually, so some of these notebook papers, that are clear notebook papers, they're actually pretty good for drawing on and they will take wash and they are um, uh, significantly cheaper than say a moleskin um, sketchbook. So if you're starting out and you want an everyday sketchbook to get you drawing lots, that's one of my sort of tips really and what I still go for. However, why I always wanted to do this video is uh, because I've recently finished some sketchbooks. So I'm starting new ones and I, I got online. I was like, oh, I want to do another Anything Goes sketchbook. So I bought this paperage one on Amazon. I think it might be like six. I got it for quite a good price, six dollars. And I mean, it's a nice colour. It feels but it's super smooth. I'm not, I've got to be honest, I'm not loving this one. I don't know why. Um, so here's some early, I'm gonna, it's definitely gonna be an Anything Goes journal. I kind of feel it's going to be, I mean, I was trying pencil here. It's not, is it, what is it like? It's not, I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, you can't, depends. This is the thing. I think you've got to, sketchbooks are very individual. Find what you like. Um, and then I, I'm starting to write notes in it, sort of use it as a studio 
journal as well. I mean, as you can see, it's really, it's always because I'm, I don't care so much for this one. I'm actually very free in it. So I'm definitely gonna use it. I think it's almost gonna be like a sort of a, yeah, a writing journal, sketching journal. I'm not sure that I will do a sketchbook tour of, I mean, I can't do a sketchbook tour of it now, but like, it's probably be a bit more of a personal space, but no, I don't, this isn't gonna be something that I'm gonna do very nice finished work and personally. I also talked about going ages ago too cheap. I mean, this is one that I'm probably gonna end up ripping up and re recycling in some ways. This was just, the paper just, it's fall, it's falling apart. I think it was a two pounds from a very cheap shop like a Tiger Tiger shop. And that's, you know what, it's not, it's fine. It's great for, if you're wanting to do everyday drawing because you're not gonna be precious in it. But uh, I feel that, um, if you're actually just going to be doing sketches, um, proper drawing and sketches, this this sort of a sketchbook. So I've got actually let's go for this first because this is actually a cheap. I got a set of these for three for like I can't remember how much now, but they're sort of craft paper. Now the funny thing is, you could argue that this paper is actually thinner um, than the that paperage journal I just showed you. I mean, but I don't know why. I kind of. It's not quite as smooth and shiny, and I feel... Am I holding it upside down? No, I'm not, thank goodness. Actually, this one has actually taken some paint as well. So it takes gouache, oil pastel. So yeah, I like... I got a set of these. I also got them, because sometimes if you do, you can always think, well, I can give them away as presents for children's parties and things. But yeah, this is actually not... I quite like... It's not too bad paper, actually. However, I then felt it with the paint I don't want to use too much paint in it so I've recently did I think it's in my most recent sketchbook tour yeah this one I did a tour of and then I used it for paint I tried to use it for pencil sketches because I felt pencil worked really well in it it just had a nice feel but I mean the only thing is in some ways I regret it because I'm like oh, I quite like some of these sketches but I've got no idea if this paper will I probably in some ways could have used a, a nicer journal. I didn't realise I was going to get so in-depth into some of these sketches. Um, so yeah, so from that, I think this is like my sort of a figurative art sketchbook. I have then still on the cheaper side of things, I will try and put links to some of these craft, these journals, but I don't know if sometimes they don't exist anymore. Um, so, but you can always find equivalents, I find. Uh, and yeah, so if that's something you're interested in. But I got, again, I don't know if these are still going. I can't, I didn't, it's not even on my shopping list, but this was a good buy. There were three of, did I get three or two of these? Two of these, I think it was, oh, I can't, it was a, a decent price, like $10 or $12. And the paper, the reason I like it, it's quite a nice size. So I, I don't know the make, I don't think it's a no make, uh, but the paper is actually a nice thick drawing paper. It's not watercolour or mixed media, I don't think. I think it's like a thick drawing paper. It's cream and it takes pencil very well. I like how it, the, the feel of um, Prismacolor on it. And it will also take paint, because I used it for my 100 head projects as well with wash. And it's sort of turning, this one's staying into, I want to finish this journal, a figurative sort of art, figurative sort of more for my sort of drawing. Um, people sketchbook but yeah I, I'm loving the pencil on it so it's just got a feel so a lot of the time it's about I feel like it's like the feel of material on the paper um which is important but these this is definitely not as expensive as uh a moleskin journal or even those um the ones that are all very popular that I only have actually one of, and I think I bought the wrong size. And I do, and I do have actually, you know, these are, tal what are they called? The Royal Talon ones. I feel like a lot of people are using these because these are like the equivalent of, um, a cheaper equivalent of moleskin. And yeah, they are, they are actually, yeah, I like these. The paper, paper feels good. I've got some large ones, but I haven't, I need to get some point like just to, I, this is sort of my favorite size of sketchbook. I don't know what the size is. Is it, what is it, 8.5 times 5.5, something like that? Uh, this sort of size, because it's a nice, you can put it in your bag. It's not too small, not too big. This size though, I do, I have got an ongoing one and that is in my rucksack. I carry it with me everywhere. And I'm a bit, I haven't been as 
good at, good about using it as I should have been, but um, yeah, it's uh, lovely. Yeah, these are nice little size ones because I mean, yeah, it's not going to weigh you down. There's no excuse really, I feel, not to have that in your bag. So yeah, the Royal Talons ones, I think, are. Oh, I probably will maybe switch to those rather than me being such a bit of a skinflint and going so cheap on a, I mean, I probably don't need, I could probably can treat myself now and move on from super cheap sketchbooks. Uh, but another great, there is, there's even more alternatives out there like um, Artesia, the Artesia brand. I actually kind of like, so the finished sketchbook, there is a tour, I've got some landscape sketchbooks and it came in a set of three. I actually gave, sometimes I like to give these as presents as well to friends who I know are into art because I think that's quite a fun present, gift. So I keep one for myself and then like divvy it up. But this is good quality. So this is watercolour paper, they advertise it. I mean, look, it's not like arches or top quality watercolour paper and it still buckles if you go very wet on it. For example, I think it's a similar paper to the small skin. But like, but here's like, this is a nice, a nice size. This one I've done a tour of. But this is, so this is watercolour paper and it's Artesia as well. So you can get them in different sizes. I've got the, I'll show you the, the larger sort of A4-ish. I don't think it's exactly A4, but where is it? Hold on, it's just here. Here you go. So this, I like how this brand comes in all, you know, you can get them in all different sizes, but I think essentially it should probably be the same paper and yeah so this is great i did feel a bit precious i mean these are more expensive i think oh gosh the, the prices fluctuate don't they but i think it was like 24 for two um and you don't get huge amounts of sheets in them but in some ways i don't quite like that because then you feel like you finish a sketchbook uh slightly quicker and yeah i mean obviously this sort of paper is going to take a battering really and you can do what you want in it. So yeah, this was um because I, I went, went to the floral workshop yesterday, which was great fun. And I pre-prepared this page. So you can like put collage on it. I mean, some ways I'm like, I should probably reserve it for more wet work and utilize the fact that it's so heavy quality. But I don't know, I'm trying not to be precious about sketchbooks. They're just sketchbooks and they're there to have fun in. Sometimes like, one side, can I just say, I've noticed is smooth. And then you've got the rough, I can't remember if it's hot or cold or whatever, but you've got the other side is more of a a rough grain. But yeah, so those are some watercolour sketchbooks and obviously go for um, the size that feels right to you. Sometimes I, I like to vary it. It will be won't surprise if you've seen all my stuff. I like variety. I don't want to keep to the same thing, I've got to be honest. So I definitely don't have brand loyalty. I just buy something's on offer and a, really, a good price like you learn to judge when it's come at a good price then i'll buy that and these are i know i've got a lot but this is over years and years and years either yeah and this is this is one of my favorite um ones i think i might have used i might have one more left was it a pack of oh i do have one more left oh that's quite exciting yeah, so I've got, there's a pack of three and I got these back, I think it was a pandemic. And this is, they advertise this as mixed, it's RTC again, and it's advertised as mixed media paper. And um, yes, this I actually think is the best one of their range because I personally think you can still do watercolour. I don't, I mean, it's like, I don't feel there's a huge amount of difference between uh, in terms of thickness between the, the, the watercolour paper and this mixed media paper, really. And you get more sheets, you get more, food, you get loads of sheets in this one. I think it's, I can't remember how many pages, but there's lots of paper and it takes, it takes everything. I did watercolour in this journal. It was kind of an everything sort of goes, but and just for drawing. And I did treat, I did put a bit of effort into this one. This is one of my favourite sketchbooks, actually. So yeah, here I've used acrylic gouache, flat wall gouache with stuff on top. I mean, I've even painted over pages, my sort of trick of if I don't like a page, I'll paint over it. Posca, watercolour. So yes, this, yeah, watercolour. And I, you know, and look, it, you get the, the buckling, but I've talked about this before. 
I like that. I don't have a problem. I'm not, I, I, I don't really even see these as being forever. Like they're, they're sketchbooks that are nice to look back on, that give me ideas, um, but I'm not trying to make something last. I'm not sometimes thinking about archival stuff. That's not my focus. My focus is how much do I enjoy it when I'm using it? And then afterwards, how do I feel about it? Is it something I'm going to keep or am I going to try and reuse it, recycle it, um, paint over it? Because, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You can't, I guess you can't keep everything, can you? Though I do seem to have a lot of sketchbooks saying that. Oh, yeah, and then um, so this was a smaller sketchbook I didn't like. I think I got this from Hobby Lobby or somewhere and I don't know the brand. Might be Master's Touch or something, but I'm just using this one. If you don't love your sketchbooks, maybe this one is turning into sort of an abstract. I'm just putting dabs of paint and then I'll come back to it and I'm sticking in. I don't know, I was just using this as a fun place to experiment, really. And the other reason I mentioned this is because, did I show... Linda Barry. Where's Linda Barry? Yeah, so in COVID, Linda Barry, uh, I got her book. I was recommended by someone on Instagram, actually, because I was trying to get the kids into doing comics and zines we were sort of making. And, um, yeah, she uses, I think in her comic course, she ad ad advises everyone to use a composition book and just, a, you know, like a sort of thickish, uh, one of these sort of paper mate pens. And to every day sort of have a daily drawing journal within and she, i mean this book that's about it i love this book because it's so it's on the sort of similar paper it's so thin but that's what she uses so for anybody maybe i was thinking daily journaling or um wanting to make drawings and write as well like expressive writing i think there's definitely a place i mean i use these more for writing actually sort of more expressive getting things out of my head um journaling because I do one of the one of the things I've also found again recently useful in sort of hard times is the whole uh, when I learned about it, also mental health, like the the benefits of of journaling, but with yeah, sort of you can look it up. Expressive, I can't remember the studies that show it's a benefit. Obviously, there's all the morning pages as well and the creative slant on it, how it benefits creativity. But it's also um, I've actually got rid of them. Like I was just thinking about that because I have some of these journals. I found this one. I talk about it in another video because I'm so proud I found it for like two dollars. But I found this in a library, um, in the library sale for two dollars, and it's like an old it's paper chase, which is um I think like is it it's still going in the UK? I used to love paper chase, and it's sort of thick lined paper, and I use those for like writing and drawing. But the problem was, I think looking back, I was going through. We didn't have tricky times. My writing was a little bit. I look back on them, and even though I've got drawings and stuff, I was like, I'm getting rid of these journals. I don't. They were, they were, they kept me. They were good at the time. They got me, um, helped me through. You know, kept me company through some some times. But I don't need to keep those ones. I've got. I, I like my sketchbooks, but those can go. But these can be used also for drawing as well. And yeah, you can get them sometimes at quite a good price. I also like to use. I have a. I've, I don't know why I'm precious about this, but I like it if the kids come back with like graph paper journals they've not used. I mean, this would be great fun to use in a project as well. So I guess this is sort of more thinking outside the box of uh, sketchbooks. What can you use? Yeah. And um, yeah, so just to say as well, with the Artesia, this is probably my favourite sketchbook type at the moment and you will have seen if you've watched a lot of my sketchbook tools and videos I use this one a lot because it's the mixed media one and it's but a larger size it's so great for looser work for me or for these still lives where I want a bit more space and yet it will take everything so I have to say if you asked if I had to name my ultimate favorite sketchbook it would be this It'd be the Artesia, this size, which I think is like sort of an A4, was it 9.5 by 11? I don't know. Uh, this size, and it would be, yeah, this one at the moment, but then I change brands, so we'll see. Um, but one that I have, this is my second one of this. Uh, sea Whites of Brighton are great, but they're, uh, I have to get them like off Amazon here, but it's a, I think it's a UK um, sketch, you can get them in the UK, and I love this, this square size. 
this is my loose i know i'm gonna do a sketchbook tour of this one soon but this is great paper it's sort of i guess sort of a drawing a thick drawing paper and it but it takes it seems to take like japanese watercolors uh, i love how big and it gets i can stick stuff in paint i mean i'm doing quite a lot of painting in it so yeah this is and i and i love this this format as well i guess it's what you can get hold of as well and finally i think i've exhausted all my sketchbooks just to say though if one had if look mol moleskin are lovely i mean yeah, if someone's going to give me a load of sketchbooks, I'm not going to say no to, obviously not no to moleskin. And I, the problem is, is then I do get a little bit of precious over them. So, for example, this is an ongoing one that actually I have not got back. To, I need to get back to this one, but I've just been preoccupied with um, doing other things, really. So, But it is an ongoing project. It has no, it's not like I'm committing to do it daily, but it's, uh, I'm, so I'm using pictures from our travels last summer we went on a road trip and i'm painting yeah painting in gouache trying to just play around with pencil on it scenes from our road trip really and yeah i love i mean the paper's great i'm not gonna lie this is lovely so yeah i can see why people have that as a top quality ones okay so that was the sketchbooks something else just to have a think about as well is and I say that because I was probably going to be reading this is this was like I think a, um, um, it was a photo album probably meant to stick photos in it but I've been I stuck in when I was doing my sort of day, daily drawing project I sort of did a week of drawing book covers that I liked on old envelopes with gouache and I you know afterwards I was like well I actually am quite pleased with these paintings but how to file them so I've used it like a bit of a scrapbook and then I have actually got a load of um work i've cut out of sketchbooks that i didn't need to keep so oh and i checked out what it's like to paint on black um i'm probably going to because some empty pages maybe yeah file them in this book so okay paper won't take me too long to go through um because i'm pretty easy going when it comes to paper i mean i've got a few favorites and I just keep to that really. So Bristol paper. I love Bristol paper and the size is very handy as well because, and actually my, one of my kids loves Bristol paper as well. For, he was really into pencil drawings, detailed pencil drawings. You know, it's smooth, it's thick and yeah, you could, it can take paint. I do painting on it. I also like this size because I can trim it down and then it's great for me. It's really good if I want to like make work into prints because I can just stick it on my scanner bed and it doesn't really buckle too much either. So, yep. I think it's good if you want to sell work as well. I mean, this is good quality stuff. And sometimes you can also get it. Uh, I remember stocking up when Blick were doing an offer, like it was like three for, I can't remember how much, but sometimes you do get offers from Blick and things. So that is a lovely quality paper for just... I get the kit, sometimes these are on off of these sketchbooks, but they you can tear the paper out. I mean, I don't really use them as sketchbooks, but they're quite fun. Again, for just, this is mixed media paper. And it it can take, you know, if you want to do drawing or, um, or it says it's for acrylic watercolor. I mean, it will buckle if you use watercolor, quite frankly, but you could stretch it, do the whole strip. It's not too hard to stretch paper. I'm a bit lazy about doing it myself, but. Um, and then a decent, an everyday watercolour paper. I like this Canson, uh, th you know, 300 grams watercolour paper. It's fine for me. I shoot, I mean, it's not top quality. I don't know. But yeah, that's a nice watercolour paper. And I do have different sizes of it as well. Sometimes I buy, I, it's, uh, I can't find them, but I make my own. I think, did I show before? I have shown, I make my own watercolour blocks. You can just stick gum um, paint around the edge. There's lots of videos online about it. And you can make your own watercolour blocks, which is actually, um, I think, a really good thing to do because they do seem to work. I mean, and I'm not great at it. I don't, I'm not a perfectionist. So, but yeah, I mean, the, ultimately you're going to get, I don't, I'm, I am lazy about it. I used to stretch my paper and it works, but I don't. So you, you will get a little bit of uh, sometimes when you're using, because this has got has watercolour, I think it's Japanese watercolour, and then I've layered on top sort of a mixed media piece. But, I mean, 
I think if you if you're buying original art, you'd almost know if I was going to sell it. I still think it's maybe good quality products, and also I could just it's a little bit wonky, isn't it? Scan it anyway, make it into a print. And here I just want to show what I like to do also is prepare, uh, prepare, sorry, I've got tempted to pull this off, isn't I? Prepare paper ahead of time for still lifes. Because I love, I did well in the workshop, you know, I was saying that's my favourite thing, what just takes my work, I feel, to a bit of another level or makes me happier with it because of the bright colours. I love the block colours and it's a starting point for a still life or for a piece. Um, yeah. And the other thing, I'm um, because I don't like wasting, especially if I know it's a relatively good quality paper and thick, what I like to do if I've done a drawing I don't love or the kids, I keep paper that I think is okay quality and I will paint and paint and over it. Um, the only thing I was thinking, I was saying my husband, I probably shouldn't put that in the recycling, I should do if you've got too much acrylic afterwards. But uh, yeah, so you could still just go redo I mean, I guess you could also actually think about painting if you've got good sheets of paper um, with white gesso, and then you've got a new surface. And even sometimes you can use, oh, where should I put it? Use um, paper bags for drawing on top of. I, I'm going to do, I might do a separate video on like college, co collage fodder and collage papers and what paper can you just play around on? Because I feel that's a different. Personally, I like to buy, what I like to do is buy a good quality paper in, rel in bulk. So, um, and I also like to keep bits of paper for just, like for example, this box, you can, and I've seen an artist on Instagram who makes lovely, beautiful work on cardboard. I mean, and she's selling it as well. Like, I guess she's prepping it. Um, I can't remember the name, Rosie something, but she's like painting brightly with preparing it and then going on top with oil pastels and acrylics. And she does very well sort of selling these pieces. So you're recycling and it's, you know, a nice sturdy surface and you're probably gonna be a lot freer on it. What I, what I won't buy probably, oh, maybe one day, but Archer's paper just seems so, so I, I know it's great, but those blocks are beautiful, but maybe if I was selling work, but consistently, uh, but I just don't feel I would, I just wouldn't be able to relax and get loose how I want to. Now, this is my number one tip also, and I know a lot of, I think other artists use this as well, this Blick drawing paper. I bought it, uh, I buy it in like a hundred sheets, this sort of a, is this a three size? And it's a pretty decent price. I can't remember how much, but it's like a nice cream tone. But yeah, basically, have a look. You can get nice drawing paper that will take, and I'll show you, that can take, as long as you're not too, I shared this on Patreon, because I'm not gonna move my camera for this. Um, but I, this is like pieced together. So I've got four sheets of this, and I've, they were sort of tester paper. There's old bits of abstracts and I've stuck it together and then I've made it, let's swing it around, into a ginormous piece by just taping it on the back. But I want to show you that this paper can take quite a, a lot of different, I mean, it's not flat, but it can take paint and it's got even watercolor, all sorts on it. So I use it like in a mixed media paper because it's, because it's in it relatively inexpensive, I feel free on it. And you know, then sometimes if I don't like the work, I cut it up, collage it, cut it down, make it, you can make it into an accord. Say you don't love that big piece, you can make it into an accordion sketchbook. There's all sorts you can do um, if you can have the bigger paper. And then in COVID with the kids, I ended up investing. This is a, I think I got a lot of sheets. I mean, it did seem quite, I spent quite a lot, like 30 to 40, maybe even. There's like a ream of 500. So basically I've got a lot of these sheets of nice drawing paper. And that means that I'm with the kids, can draw on it. And then I don't, you know, I'm not like, they can be expressive and then they sometimes pass on their drawings to me and then I'll recycle them or I use it as well for my work. And it's, it's, it's all right, it's not brilliant. I wouldn't, I prefer the Bristol paper if I'm honest and I prefer, you know, the other makes. But um, yeah, just it depends where you're at and what you're wanting to do. So for me, I'd rather keep, I feel like the take home from this is I've reached the stage, but I don't want to go super cheap, quite frankly, that never tends to work well for me. 
but I don't want to go super expensive. I mean, you know, you could. But also, if you think about with me, I do tend to make quite a lot of work. And if being prolific, I don't want... I would end up... Yeah, and I'd be... I would do not want to think how much I'd spend on moleskin sketchbooks because I get through sketchbooks quite quickly. So for me, it's like the balance between sort of cheap and cheerful and a nice intermediate brand um, is how I like to play around. And yeah... I'm not going to pan around today because it's an absolute... I've got work everywhere, which is lovely. Oh, I just want to show you one thing. So, yeah, I did have great fun um, with my work, with the my first online live workshop, and it was loose floor still life. So, yeah, talking about paper, and this is why I wanted to make this video. Uh, I was using... This is... I think this is watercolour paper. And you can see, because I have used a very wet watercolour layer but I love it because that you've got I just went really free and expressive but that's fine I have not got a problem with that um and if I want to scan this in and cut it down that's gonna that's not gonna be an issue I mean even I'd even sell this to be honest with you so I'm, you know because I'm sure people aren't going to be too you know just be honest it's like it's an original piece of art it's and it hasn't been stretched but yeah this has worked out well and I've got gouache I've got neo color on top so for mixed media work i kind of like that and so we did um it was yeah i wanted to show this is why i got through quite a few pieces myself in that session and that's also why i like to not spend too much money on um watercolor paper i just try and buy and you know and i paint on top this is this one here has got you can see it coming through underneath there's another drawing and then I've just painted on top with a cheap matte acrylic, I think, or it could be a gouache, it's whatever it is, it's matte, just sticking on collage, that's paper bag, yeah, oil pastel. I've actually invested in some oil pastel fixative as well, so there we go. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. I don't know how this one's going to turn out, but um, yeah, uh, hopefully now I will get better at getting back to uploading and things. So I will, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.